Hi guys, this is Rice Snow. So last time we succeeded to draw these background tiles, but uh, this is just a small sample map, and the size is only as large as the game screen. If single screen is all you need for your game, this might be okay, but what we are trying to create ultimately in this tutorial is a 2D action RPG so we want to have a larger map so in this video we will create a world map and draw it on the screen and to create a world map i have prepared a few extra tiles tree sand and earth so let's copy these to this uh, tiles package and uh, let's load these new tiles. So uh, yeah, let's copy this and uh, add three more. So three and index four and five. So uh, three is us and four is tree and five is sand. Now we can use these tiles too. And this is the world map I created. It's a 50 to 50 tile map. Of course, you can create your own map. And if you want to create a larger map, you can do that. And now, before loading and drawing this world map file, we need to do some adjustment. What we're gonna do is, we edit the code in player class. So instead of moving around on the screen, the player character will always be displayed at the center. And the two, we will expand the boundary of our tile drawing loop. So our current tile drawing system is set for drawing tiles as large as our screen size. And that's not enough to draw a world map. So we change it. And when these two steps are done, we can display our world map and move around it. So let's get to the step one. Let's go to this entity class. And we're going to rename this X and Y to world X and world Y. How to say, just for better understanding because we are going to use two kinds of X and Y. So the one is world X and the world Y, and the other one is screen X and screen Y. These are different and indicate different coordinates. And uh, understanding this difference will be the key to understand the uh, mechanics of game camera. Okay, then uh, let's go to this player class and uh, rename this x and y too so world x world y wait what oh wow what is this world world y sorry and uh yeah this one too world y World Y. Uh, okay, uh, we leave this for now uh, because we're gonna use a different kind of X and Y here. So, and World Y, and this is also World X. So, in this player class, rename this X and Y in set default values and also X and Y in this update method. And this world X and Y is not screen position. This is not where we draw on the screen. This is player's position on the world map. And I want to change this default player position. So this is going to be the starting point. So uh, I want to uh, start the game at this point. So 
So this is gonna be uh, 22, 20, 1, 2, 3, 23. So instead of this 100, 100, we're gonna type gp dot, we're gonna use this tile size and times 23 and also gp dot tile size times 21. This is gonna be the starting position. Then in this player class, we create another x and y variables. Okay, so public final int screen x public final int screen y. So now we have world x, world y, and the screen x and the screen y. And the screen x and the y indicate where we draw player on the screen. So we place this player character at the center of the screen and scroll the background as he moves. That's what we're gonna do. So first, screen x gp dot screen width divided by two and also screen y equal gp dot screen height divided by two. What do I do? Yeah. So this returns the the halfway point of this screen. So when we draw this player character, so instead of this x and y, uh, let's replace it with screen x and the screen y. So this screen x and the screen y don't change throughout the game. These are uh, final variables. So the player character's screen position doesn't change. Okay, so let's check this. All right. Uh, yeah. So now player's position is fixed at the center of the screen or actually, yeah, sorry. Uh, this is not actually the center of the screen. These two variables indicate the center of the screen for sure, but the problem is these coordinates are used for the top left corner of the image. So we need to do a little adjustment from this value. We're gonna subtract gp.tile size divided by two and this two. All right, so let's check. Now, you can see the difference. Yeah. Yeah, now the player character is displayed at the center of the screen. So the step one is done. Let's get to the step two. Okay, so let's go to this game panel and we create some world map parameters world settings a public final int max world call uh, equal 50 public final int max world low equal 50 and uh, public Final int world with equal tile size times max world call. Final int world height equal tile size max world law. Yeah, as I said, you can change these numbers as you like. So uh, I think this game panel class is okay. So let's go to tile manager class and uh, we're gonna change the size of this map tile num2. So we're gonna change this from 
max screen call to max world call and uh, this is also max world law and uh, okay let's change this file pass to so yeah to this one world 01 world 01 and uh, in this roadmap method we're gonna change max screen call to max world call and max world call max world call and max screen log to max world log so basically we are doing a larger loop here so in the previous loop the screen size was the boundaries but now the world map is the boundaries now we move on to the draw method and do some arrangement and this is gonna be a little bit complicated because uh, we're gonna implement a camera function so first we're gonna delete these x and y so we're not gonna use this x and y in this loop and delete this and this and this two and then we're gonna change this call and log to world call and world log and so copy this world call and paste here world call here and here and here and here and world log to here and here and here and also let's change this max screen call to max world call world call world log and now a tricky part so ultimately there are three things that we want to know tile image and uh, where to draw the tile on the screen and we already know what kind of tile image it is going to display so this is okay and to find out this x and y we type like this int world x equal world call times gp dot tile size and int world y equal world log times gp dot tile size and then int screen x equal world x minus gp dot player dot world x plus gp dot player dot screen x uh wait uh oh, this is not public wait why why i'm seeing the error visible player to public ah okay okay uh sorry we need to set this as public player class okay then one more variable screen y equal world y minus gp dot player dot world y plus gp dot player dot screen y uh, why i always type like this for huh? world and uh we're gonna paste this screen x and uh, screen y here yeah so let me explain about this part first we check the tiles world x so that is world call times tile size so if it's a uh, call zero row zero tile then uh, it's uh, it's gonna be a zero times 48 zero times 48 so uh, 
x and y are also 0, 0. And if it's a world called 1 and a world of 0 tiles, so which means uh, this one, then uh, world x will be uh, 1 times 48, so world x will be 48, and world y is still 0. Then we need to know where on the screen we need to draw it. Again, this screen x is different from world x. World x is the position on the map, and the screen x is where on the screen we draw it. So imagine, if player is at world x 500 and world y 500, then player is 500 pixels away from this 00, zero tiles. Let's say it's around here, then uh, this 00, zero, zero tiles should be drawn at 500 pixels to the left and 500 pixels to the top from player. That's why we subtract the player's world x and y from the tiles world x and y. And that returns the tiles screen position. So uh, if player's position is 500, 500, then uh, this tiles screen position will be x minus 500 and y minus 500. So basically it's out of our game window. Then now uh, why we add this player's screen x and y? So there is a little catch here. So remember, the player's screen position is always at the center of the screen. So for example, screen x0 and screen y0 means a uh, top left corner here. And this way, you know, it goes minus and minus. So 0, 0 is here. Even if player is standing at uh, world x0 and world y0 here, but still, he is displayed at the center of the screen, not here. So we need to offset this difference. So we add this to the calculation. Adding this, we can offset the difference and we can get correct coordinates for this tiles screen X and screen Y. I hope you understand and uh, it's okay even if you still feel, ah, uh, what, what? It, I was like that. I, I, it took a while to, you know, wrap my head around this. So it's okay. For now, just copy and paste this code. And, uh, but ho I hope you will get it eventually. And I think you will. And I hope my explanation was enough. Yeah, this is complicated. Anyways, so we found out a tile screen X and Y. So after drawing tile, we increase this world call by one so we can draw the next tile. And if world call hits uh, this max world call, yeah, we draw one by one, blah, 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 blah. And when hit this tile, this number, then uh, we increase, uh, we reset call and increase row. So we move here and draw this line and this line, this line, this line. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this should work now. So let's check it. I hope this works. All right. Yep. So now we are exploring the world now. So this is the world map that I created. Yeah, of course, there is no collision yet. So this is working, but we can add a little more touch to improve our rendering efficiency. You can continue as it is, but I recommend you to do this to avoid uh, like a slow game performance and stuff like that. So. Maybe you have noticed, but right now, this while loop is drawing all the tiles on the map. So that means it is drawing tiles 
that we cannot see on the screen too, and that's not so efficient. This is still a relatively a small map, but uh, when you have a very large map, it can slow the game down. So we only need to draw the tiles that we can see. We don't need to draw a tile which is 500 pixels away from the player. Yep, so this is the final touch. So with this, our tile drawing system will be complete. So please stick with me. So before drawing a tile, we add this if statement. So if world x is larger than gp.player.world x minus gp.player.screen x and world x is smaller than gp.player.world x plus gp.player.screen x and world y larger than gp.player.world y minus gp.player.screen y and world y is smaller than gp.player.world y plus gp.player.screen y all right and uh, we're gonna put this draw image method in this if statement okay that's it so what this if statement means is basically we create a boundary so that is uh, from the center of the screen minus player screen x and uh, plus player screen x and uh, minus player y and plus player y so as long as a tile is in this boundary we draw it so uh, let's check this Okay, like this so uh, let's check yeah 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 hmm so now we can see that the program is only drawing the tiles around the player but I guess we should expand the boundary a bit more since uh, you know we are seeing the black background so why don't we expand this boundary by one tile to each direction so to do that we just uh, okay i don't like this format for some reason uh, okay so to do that we add this word x and tile size and this one is minus gp dot tile size and this is uh, plus gp dot tile size and minus gp dot tile size okay this should be okay so let's check this So now it looks the same as before, but actually it's only drawing the tiles around the player so we can cut some extra processing. Yeah, so now the program is drawing the world map and we can move around it. But of course there is no collision happening yet. So every tile is possible. So next time we will implement collision detection. Thanks for watching and see you again. Bye.